Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Cozy Corner with Sana. Today I'm joined with an amazing person with me. I'm gonna let you introduce yourself, but I just need to, I wanna tell you guys, we should have started recording this an hour ago, but <laughs> me and I just clicked so well that we were just, you know, talking and talking and talking about life that we didn't realize the time. So we could do a podcast on what we spoke about yeah we should do a whole episode about what we spoke about we need an episode two with her but yeah go on Hafsa introduce yourself hello everyone my name is Hafsa and I'm a mature student who decided to join my studies after 14 year gap Um, and I would say that um, it was a lifelong dream a lifelong goal that I wanted to achieve so here I am and uh, I'm also a mother to adorable eight-year-old and um, if I were to speak to you about my background, Sana, that would basically be um, that I actually have a business back in Sri Lanka, mm-hmm. and it's called Live with Hafsa. So um, it's surrounded around motherhood. So as a mummy, when I became mummy, that was uh, that was a very tough journey for me. So um, I have, I was actually postnatal, mm-hmm. and um, and and when I became pregnant. Um, I essentially, my world turned 360. So this business is about supporting women and uplifting women in all walks of life. So um, women who are disadvantaged, uh, those who are postnatal, Mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And um, yeah, it was a successful running business until the point that COVID came along. And um, yeah, boom, Uh, in Sri Lanka, there was a massive economic crisis, Mm -hmm. political instability, and uh, we were really, really struggling. Although my business, I would say, was quite successful and still running, we had to make quite a bit of hard decisions. And uh, last March, I don't know whether you heard, but the Sri Lankan president got kicked out of his seat. Okay. A president Rajabaksa. Mm-hmm. So this is when uh, my husband and I had to decide to make a very, very difficult decision, probably the most toughest decision I had to make, mm-hmm. to kind of leave because we couldn't really think of a future back in Sri Lanka. Yeah. And um, yeah, I had to kind of like, you know, really decide within a very short period mm-hmm. to pack up and come here. So and kind of. Here? So we moved here in September, okay. but the process of applying for university started in March. Mm-hmm. So that was around the same time this whole crisis was happening and things didn't look like it was going to settle anytime soon. Yeah. So, and it's been like this from the time I was born, really. So there's really very little hope at the moment. And a lot of people are making use of this time to come to the UK because of the amazing opportunities that it has to yeah, offer. 100%. So, and then you decided to study again after 14 years. So after like 14 years. So we, before coming here, did you already know? Well, okay, this is such a stupid question because I was going to say, before studying here, did you know that you're about to like going to studies again? Absolutely not. I never thought mm-hmm. so because, uh, so what happened was I grew, I, I grew up in a very conservative society mm-hmm. where um, I pretty much was a full-time mother. That was my 24-7 job. Yeah. And like, you know, um, I think I gave up everything because I think my worth, my value, everything depended on like how well I raised my children, how well I, uh, you know, how good of a partner I was. This is where my self-worth was. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's all I knew doing. And before you know it, it was eight years. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, that was also the reason my previous marriage broke, broke up. And like, I kind of really struggled because I really knew that I was meant for more. So when I was postnatal and this entire journey of kind of overcoming it uh, was through self-compassion. Yeah. And, and that kind of really made me think, you know what? It's all right because we're all flawed. We are fragile human beings and it's okay not to be a perfect mother or a perfect partner. Yeah. You just fo- need to focus on being good enough and that's, that's basically my program. Mm-hmm. And when this crisis happened in Sri Lanka, I thought, you know what? I, I want to do better for myself. I can be a good mother as well as achieve all my dreams. Mm-hmm. And this is, so I, I remarried a little later and uh, my partner really, really focused on like, you know, told me, you know what, this is your chance. This is your opportunity to also achieve your dreams. Yeah. And and that's when I th- thought, you know what, I'm going to take a leap of faith. And this was a point that, you know, really transformed me, a chapter that made me realize I'm made for more. I want to do things that I really love, something that is meaningful, something that that really is impactful. And I could really feel it in my bones and it was just the right time. And there you go. I applied. I never thought I would get through. I got through. And before you know it, I was here. So what are you studying? I'm studying human resource management. I'm I'm doing my postgraduate in human resource management. Okay, lovely. My, okay, if I think of it, like, you know, I'm like, I'm probably like 10 years younger than you or something, right? <laughs> and then when I get my summer holidays, 
um, and it come and it's like okay now I have to go back to studying. Just those six weeks, I'm like, how am I gonna do it again? And I'm sure every single one of you <laughs> listening, you relate. I can resonate you know, with that. You know, like your holidays, and then you're like, okay, how am I gonna go back to like studying and revising and all that stuff? Yeah. You started your studies after fourteen years. Yes. That's a long time. Mm-hmm. Like, did you have any struggles? Like, absolutely, you know, darling. I wanna know your journey, like. How, yeah, I want to know everything. Absolutely. So um, I think, um, especially for myself, because I, I had a different kind of challenge. And I would say this may not be applicable to every like mature student, because it really depends on your gap, your circumstances, what made you really come here. And for me, um, I, I don't know whether I mentioned this to you, Sana, but uh, I had to make a very difficult decision to leave behind my son. Uh, and come to this country because I didn't have custody. And that was a really tough experience for me. Mm -hmm. In fact, I didn't even have time to grieve. So while I was here in September, I was still like, it was a different way of living for me, you know, like the fact that I didn't have my son anymore because all I knew for those eight years was being a mom. And now I had to be a student, you know? So, uh, and unfortunately for me, I also came at the wrong time when there was an accommodation crisis. Yeah. And to my knowledge, it's still going on. It's literally still going on. Uh, so it was really bad. I was literally in like hotels for like three weeks. Mm-hmm. And then we, all our savings were getting drained out. And then I was like, my husband was like, you know, this is really looking like, have we made the wrong choice mm. and just like that the universe turned towards us before you know it out of nowhere a friend of a friend got in touch with a business partner uh, who happens to be here in Birmingham in Mosley and they're Amber and Rehan who we had never met in our lives and they welcomed us to their home and I was there for an entire month they gave us shelter they gave us food they took care of us and we actually call ourselves their adopted kids <laughs> and they're still family and that restored my faith in humanity because I tell you darling the good you do comes back to you and this was one of those moments where I really believe maybe some good I did kind of gave me this opportunity and it really bought some balance alongside that I would say that of course you know when you're a mature student especially if you're a parent you have financial struggles you know like you not only have to, you have to pay for your tuition you have to look into your children's um, tuition and of course cost of living isn't helping um, and I think just if you really look at the coming back to studying again I was always in a lot of self-doubt can I do this am I good enough and especially with my younger peers who 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 are very confident and to be honest sometimes I didn't even know what they were talking yeah. you know and even what I pick HR has changed so much from what it was 14 years ago mm-hmm. so like understanding that discipline learning to learn again um, it, it was all kind of like you know a, a big struggle at the beginning and yeah. I would say just not knowing where the resources were you know like even though maybe there was a lot of resources like it was all overwhelming to kind of like be faced with at once exactly you know so like Like, you know when you when you started studying and everything like you know did you ever feel that you you don't fit in or something absolutely oh my god yeah like I don't know Absolutely. So if I were to tell you, uh, elaborate on that, I did feel extremely lonely when I came. Mm-hmm. I'm a very friendly person, Sana, but I was... Trust, the... trust me, she really is. <laughs> like, right now, she's going to list all the struggles that she's going through. But yeah. I that one person who like, you would just find smiling all the time and just... Oh, I appreciate always that. Always talking about the most randomest thing in the world and like always <laughs> laughing, always smiling and just... Yeah, the little bundle of joy. She's, she's like tiny little. <laughs> Thank you, my sweetheart. So um, also, uh, so uh, if I were to say this to you, so as, as the only Sri Lankan in my class, at the beginning when I came, although I spoke and I mingled with everyone, I really felt lost. And I was extremely lonely because I did not belong to any clique. And here uh, in Aston, everybody is in their cliques. You have the Nigerians, you have the Indians, you have uh, the Saudi Arabians, and I didn't really fit into anything, you know, for a while. And if you ask me, like, I remember, like, like almost bottling up a lot and like almost tearing up while I had to go back home and like telling my husband, oh my God, I'm really worried. Like this, you know, I don't feel like I fit in anywhere, but everything changed because of my approach. And what was my approach? I became the United Nations. I sat. <laughs> I kind of like you know, and, and you know what's an I'd work. I, I it did. I have friends from all nationalities, you know, I, and I try not to stick to one like group of people. Although I must say, like you know, 
I do kind of have my group now and or my tribe, if you say. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of my approach was that, you know, what's the point sulking? Because see, just like I said, if you take in that negativity, if if a ship cannot be sunk by the massive, enormous ocean, you know, similarly, if you take in negativity, if you doubt yourself and you you're always criticizing yourself and worrying, you know, that that will only happen if you let it kind of seep in yeah. so you know and then i remember my husband like you know uh, on one of the walks back home after lectures he's telling me you know like why are you like I, I don't even get it like just do what you always did back home which is basically to in helping others to help yourself mm -hmm. yeah so um so uh if, should I be telling you about maybe what it was like overcoming all of these struggles? Yes, of course, go for it. So like um, one of the things I remember at the very beginning stages was like, was that I felt like I was a frog in the well, mm -hmm. right? Like I really felt like, oh my God, I'm not getting it. Like what my colleagues or my peers used to be doing in like two to three hours, to one hour, I, I would literally, literally take about three hours because mm -hmm. I really didn't know to kind of like really fit into that role and kind of the transition wasn't as smooth as I expected. Yeah. You know, I had mentors, I had all those things, but it wasn't working, you know? Um, and essentially my strategy was to, to help others. Mm -hmm. When you are struggling and you want to help others, that to me is love. Yeah. Okay, and, and, and love conquers everything. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to reach out to people, regardless of them being like mature students or whether they were um, international students. I reached out to my whole batch and said, guys, you know what? I want to create a WhatsApp group. Yeah. And this is going to be called the Aston HRM Froggies. Mm -hmm. And okay. Froggies, yeah, that's what we call ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that WhatsApp group grew from 15 participants to 64 participants. Whoa. And it's a platform that I'm really proud of, Sana, because it's it's a safe place for everyone to ask anything without being judged. Is there uh, all mature students in there? Well, majority I would say, but like I would say it's a mix. Mm -hmm. People who are struggling even language. Mm -hmm. So that platform was still very kind to each other. Mm -hmm. And do you know that we also have students who are not struggling? Yeah. Because you know why? Um, when you do, when you have the opportunity to do good for someone, it feels good. So we, I had my younger peers there, you know, joining us and be like, you know what? I'm going to tell you, teach you how to do uh, to uh, do a meeting, a Teams call. Or I'm going to teach That's you how so to, sweet. yeah, mm -hmm. you know. And, and, and this this reaching out strategy that Hafsa used, like you know, helping others and everything. That's basically how I met her because that's when um, I put on my work for committee thing. Yes. Um, advert and everything, and I was like, people need to join. And then Hafsa <laughs> was one of the, I think, I think it was one of the like the first few people to join. Right. Like to, uh, to Through the interview, it. okay. Yeah, yeah, I think, I'm not, I can't even remember, but I knew that I, I saw your application and I was like, oh my God, this, this person's amazing. Like, like I genuinely wanted to meet her and then uh, we did the deal interview and it was just amazing. And then now Hafsa is like one of, well, all of my uh, work to community people are like really, amazing. Really valuable. Yes. But I think Hafsa has a special place. Aww. Oh, can I also add on to this, not just because you said that, <laughs> Uh, uh, and and I'm so happy this is on record. I definitely think Sana is uh, is definitely the best leadership we could have oh ever my God, expected. Stop it. Not stop it. <laughs> you know why, Sana? I'll tell you why. You know why you're special and Go why why I say that is because uh, and you know what I actually like kind of thought of uh, speaking about it today. When I um, as I mentioned, you know, like when all these things were like kind of like bogging me down and like you know it was really difficult to kind of find myself my identity which was to kind of really help others and this and all these opportunities started opening up and it started with the welfare committee yeah. and then you know what when you interviewed me and then I, I shared my story with you and then we had our first meeting and I realized oh my god I'm not the only person she actually selected every single person who had a struggle and that is why the welfare committee is the best bloody committee yeah, in the student yeah. union <laughs> we're actually the very best and yes. because you picked people who were disadvantaged you gave us equity you gave us a platform to to really you know have the opportunity to do something meaningful to make a difference yeah, and gonna, nobody i want to add on to that yeah because and everybody in the team, every single member mm -hmm. has been through some kind of challenge. Yes, and that's and what makes I, us special. Well, yeah, because they've been through a challenge and every single one of them then, you know, wanted to change that and they were really passionate about it. For yes. example, you, uh, okay, we're going to talk about it just to men and men, but like obviously the Good Enough Parent Program, 
So, so Maya was the one who uh, challenged me yeah, yeah. and said, why do we not have language, like counselling in different languages? Exactly. So now that's happening. Yes. Vijay, uh, obviously the mutual students day, obviously like we're working together, but you know, and then Lily with all the mental health posts and all the mental health stuff. So like, yes, there, there, there are people in my committee who are passionate about good, good causes, life causes, yeah. But they are the people who are really passionate about it and who have challenged me as well and have been like, you have that power, you <laughs> need to make things, you know, Happen. you have to get it done. Yes. And um, obviously, I still have uh, like a couple of people in the committee who don't like, you know, haven't been through like, you know, such big challenges, but we can't assume they, they're really passionate about it. They really wanted to be in the committee. So now they're in the committee and they learn. I never knew what a mature student's like struggle is. I never knew what a parent struggle is. Why? Because I've never been through it. True. Uh, as much as I wanna, even now, as much as I, I, we're doing this whole episode. Uh, as much as I wanna ask you, like, how was it to leave your leave your child behind? Mm. How was it to start again? Mm. Everything. I'm still fully. I still fully won't be able to understand what you're going through because it's such a personal experience to you. Absolutely. And I feel like that's actually that's like every mental health condition because if i uh, like you know anxiety is something that a lot of people go through like a lot of people go through but if you had anxiety and i had anxiety our experience wouldn't be the same absolutely as much as i try to explain to you that hafsa when i get anxiety i get really bad anxiety attacks and you full-heartedly would try to understand me you would still not fully understand it because you've not been through it you know you've not been through it yes so Yes, we're doing these episodes. Yes, we did. We did an episode of like international students' uh, struggles and mature students' struggles. But you know, this is just for people to understand that they are going through something. And everything is valid. Every person's feelings every, are valid. Yeah, every person's feeling are valid. Feelings are valid because trust me, I, I wouldn't have known what mature students go through. Absolutely. Yeah, I would have assumed, but I wouldn't have known. <laughs> but, but you yeah, know i really appreciate sana that you you open this platform for the very first time in aston okay and you've given it this much of prominence and and uh, together with your team you're really making mature students appreciation day happen oh, yes, and it's we're making that happen yes now. and and that to us is you honoring us and you making us believe that we are important you honoring our lives mm -hmm. and I, I don't say this like you know like maybe because i'm i'm probably a lot older than you but like even people who who've just come from struggle backgrounds that have mm -hmm have been uh, a very tough experience you know to be able to have this opportunity to kind of really showcase that they are valid and that they have really really done everything it yeah. takes to inspire people the people around them as well you know yeah. and um, and i think sana like you know uh, key to kind of like overcoming this is obvious to organize yourself especially if you're a parent you know you need to have time with your kids you need to kind of have time with for yourself time to read all of those mm -hmm. things and Aston actually has quite a lot of support. Unfortunately, I discovered it very late. Mm -hmm. Learning and development, you have Debbie, you know, like she taught me how simple referencing was. Yeah. And I've forgotten all of that from 14 years ago. Yeah. And then you have, uh, you know, like um, uh, Peggy and Danny in careers and placement, you know, they really make you question your purpose mm -hmm. and give you amazing career advice and support. And you know what? Boom, use your experience, make yeah. use of your connections. Mm -hmm. You know, you have no idea how much the university can kind of offer you because you come with so little confidence of what you can do for this place but really all you just need to do is nominate yourself and put yourself out there and you'll be surprised at the amazing yeah, opportunities uh, this episode is gonna go out uh, probably on mature students day uh, this is something that we're this is the first time we're doing it um, the welfare committee is the one who told me to do it <laughs> honestly I'm not gonna lie uh, I wasn't even I was the thing is um, Half and Vijay were the one who were like, we have to do it, we have to do it. And I didn't have a clear idea in my head as to what I'm going to be doing, like what I'm executing. So I was going to go into um, a meeting and I was going to tell them that, sorry guys, we're not going to be doing it. Because honestly, like if, if you don't know what you're doing, if, if the end result is not clear to you, then, then what's the point of wasting time on it? But then I had a meeting before that and Hafsa sent me a whole document with a plan and I was like, you know what, we're doing it now. And then <laughs> we decided to call it Mature Twins, it was Appreciation Day. Oh. And then Hafsa was like, we're not dead, okay? <laughs> okay let's Sounded like something. Veterans Day to me. <laughs> like, okay, let's call it something else. But honestly, the purpose of this day, I know that you guys are probably going to listen, be listening to this after 
probably after the day. But the purpose of the day is for us to honestly do appreciate all these lovely people. And to remember that it's never too late to start over. Exactly. Yeah. Strong and brave people who come back to studies because committing to studies again. It's not easy. It's not. It's really not easy. Yes. And I really, really wanted to have a day to appreciate that. Yes, absolutely. To, and thank you to, for and, that. And to let, like, uh, you know, um, undergrad, like, not undergrad, like, non numerator <laughs> students uh, know that, you know, there are students in the university who are, you know, even if they're, like, 10 years older than you, they can, you know, you can still click with them. Like, me and Hafsa click so well. <laughs> really do. But absolutely. then you have to have that sort of, you know, thing that just because she's it's, a mature student it's, doesn't mean we can't be It's friends. being able to come down to each other's levels, yeah. right? Because that's where I told you, Sana, like, you really bought equity in your team, mm -hmm. not just with the struggles, but even with the age differences, mm -hmm. like, and how well we work together. Like, mm -hmm. we've been able to, like, pitch ourselves and, like, be heard, and we really listen to each other, and we've picked the best ideas and executed them. Yeah. So that comes from amazing leadership, you know? So, um, and if I were to just end off on a note, Sana, this is what my, 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 what's oh, the word? One piece of advice? one piece of advice to mature students who really wait, wait i want to i want to mention one more thing before you give your advice go ahead <laughs> okay just just really quickly on the mature students day we might be launching a little surprise for students who are parents um you know i was gonna do a whole um <laughs> we'll a, save a it. suspense thing but yeah they're gonna they're gonna listen to this after exactly <laughs> so well me and hafsa have been working on this uh program called good enough parent and it's like hafsa do you want to explain it but i just want to say that it's well the day that we're recording 19th of january it's still not um was it Sorry? It's still not like clear that we yes, are, it's not, yes. it's not definite that we're going to do it, but me and Hafsa are working on it, we're going to try our best to make this work. Hafsa is going to explain what the program is, but if it doesn't happen, at least you guys know that we've tried, okay? Absolutely. Hafsa, explain what the program is. So, um, this is basically aimed at parents um, across the board, it, it could be even caregivers. So when I say uh, caregivers, it could be that you're looking after your parents. Um, you have that additional pressure, that additional responsibility along with your studies. So there, there are definitely moments where you kind of really crack. And uh, this program or this workshop is really going to focus on giving you the skills, the strategies you need to kind of overcome those moments with self-compassion and um, really like help you regulate your emotions and really focus on being good enough uh, rather than the perfect parent who doesn't exist, simply. Yeah. yeah? Lovely. So yeah, that's something that me and Hafsa are working on. And I, I really, really, really hope that it comes together. Really I well. really hope but so Hafsa, too. I'm sorry to cut you off. Uh, tell me a piece of advice. So rather than calling this a piece of advice, just mm -hmm. something to reflect on. Um, I think, you know, just some thoughts to leave you with is that really focus on what makes us love ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, with utmost dedication with utmost dedication because that love will conquer everything you know and like for me i i i truly believe in uh, i believe in fate but i also believe in hard work and dedication which plays a really important role mm -hmm. and until such time i i believe truly sana that you know um until Sunday that I get the, that this opportunity that I have had over here to come here after 14 years and study has will definitely give me as well as my son something great to look behind and kind of think you know what I work really hard to live my best life mm -hmm. you know and you put in all that work so really like live your life compassionately live it with responsibility like really take um uh like with like really accept yourself for who you are mm -hmm. for the flawed human you are and be kind to yourself always because naturally we tend to always like increase that critical voice that criticizing voice so really reduce the volume over there mm -hmm. and be compassionate with yourself because that's that has been key to me and that has really helped me that's through one, this journey one thing that she really follows so yeah compassion yes absolutely so that that's it sana definitely <laughs> oh i'm so sad with like at the end of the episode oh and, and yes. don't forget you know like we're always also very um focused on um being being afraid of what could go wrong yeah. you know and really why not focus on what could go right for us mm -hmm. so 
you so you'll be surprised exactly yeah, exactly yeah, well we're at the end of the episode Hafsa thank you so much for thank you Sana today. for this privileged opportunity you are an inspirational <laughs> woman for me we really are like how this this woman is has had a whole business she left her child in India she came in Sri Lanka sorry, 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 <laughs> that's sorry. okay that's oh, okay no. I get yeah. con- they, they always confuse me for being Indian it's fine I've gotten <laughs> used to it I'm sometimes <laughs> Indian <laughs> Uh, she came here. I was saying nice things about it. Okay? <laughs> of course. Uh, she came here. She was just she's studying again. She joined the welfare committee. She's working on different programs with me. She's honestly just amazing, inspirational. She's she's the proof that if you really put your mind into something, doesn't matter your age, your gender, if you're married, if you have a kid, your situation, anything, you can really, really, really get get it done. I and really if somebody comes up to me right now and says that. Oh, I can't get this done because I'm I'm married, or I can't get this done because I'm fifty years old. No, half step proves it that you can get any that you can get done anything that you put your mind into. Thank you, Sun. I appreciate those words. Thank But you. But yeah, thank you, Hafsa, and I'll catch you guys in another episode. And I will leave Hafsa's um, app, uh, email, and Instagram and all that stuff in the comments so that you can contact her and just give ask her. Absolutely, any, like, happy to help. Anything. But yeah. <laughs> See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye.